हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी आर इन द रिपब्लिक ऑफ मालावी एम्बेसी एंड दिल्ली एंड वी आर वेरी हैप्पी वी आर विथ अस हिज एक्सलेंसी मिस्टर लियोनार्ड मेनाजी फ्रॉम हाई कमिश्नर ऑफ मालावी वेलकम यू सर थैंक यू सो मच एंड आई वेलकम यू टू द मालावी हाई कमीशन विद द होम हार्ट ऑफ अफ्रीका यू आर वेलकम इन दीड so i am dr jitendra joshi from the global india business forum the president of uh, global india business forum and we are uh, on the mission of uh, conducting the uh, interviews of various ambassador high commissioner in delhi and the main purpose uh, here sir that how we can improve the bilateral relationship between india and uh, malawi so malawi is very beautiful country uh malawi is uh, situated in the southeastern part of uh, africa and surrounded by tanzania zambia and mozambique it's around 20 million population lot of lakes greenery lot of good animals and uh, fresh water fresh clean water so malawi is known for many many things so friends uh, here we are today and uh, what i heard about sir the uh, the malawi people very smiling face yes it's, uh, that's why we are calling it the warm heart of africa the people are very friendly warm and we have been a peaceful state uh, for the since 1964 when we got independence from the british and uh, our bilateral Uh, relations existed since that time 1964 malawi and india we have had a uh, mutual uh, warm uh, relationship between the two countries and two peoples so friends as uh, his excellency has rightly suggested the, the country is very stable when the political things are stable and when the uh, top leadership is stable the country's leadership is always matters because uh, it always helps for the growth of economy and i think uh, as the stable malawi political things ultimately helping malawi to grow yeah. so as you said uh, since uh, 1964 there are a lot of things between india and malawi has started after british rule has over and we see so there is good progress is happening uh, in malawi so what do you think ki uh, what you are actually expecting as we are in india now what you are expecting from indian and indian businessman about malawi and what things needs to grow in terms of business um thank you so much uh, malawi has um, a vision called malawi 2063 so we are seeing malawi becoming a wealth self creating nation by the year 2063 and there are a number of pillars there a uh, pillar number 1 is agricultural industrialization and commercialization where we are supposed to produce and export more within that industry inclusive mechanized agriculture because we are not fully mechanized we have learned that we were in the same scenario many years ago and you were able to produce enough for your population and uh, even export because there are more importation we import more and uh, food uh, reliance uh, security situation is very volatile for our people so we need to produce more food yeah. and also be able uh, to add value uh, make it exportable because what we are exporting to india are raw materials like pigeon peas ground nuts sunflower and other things and uh, the second part is to improve on uh, energy we need uh, to make sure that for economic growth a country should be self reliant and be able to produce more energy for factories and manufacturing firms uh, to be able to produce whatever needs to be done yes uh, so we require more assistance in that area as well because we are lacking uh, we rely on hydro and a few uh, solar powered plants that are, have been put up so the government has liberalized the energy sector as well so we are trying to bring a lot of investors in that area uh, so that um, we should be able to support the mining industry which is the third one uh, we have uh, a lot of gemstones rope tile uh, gold and other rare earths 
uh, this uh, mining industry needs to be fully invested in. And you know that uh, to invest in mining, you require huge capital. And so we are uh, soliciting more investors in that area for Malawi to be able to do mining and get returns. And the, the, the market is liberal, good policies, tax incentives are there, tax holidays are there for investors. One stop center, we call it um, the Malawi Investment Trade Center, where every investor can be able to go to and be helped uh, to register companies, follow the laws, and establish any type of investment. Uh, investment is required in all sectors. Um, and uh, the other thing is the, the digital information technology for knowledge management, sharing. And you know that a country can't develop yeah. if we are lacking in that area. So we are also inviting a lot of uh, inputs from India. Um, the other thing is that um, we know that you are well developed in the health sector. Yeah. So Malawi, we do import uh, more uh, both uh, pharmaceutical products and also more of our patients are referred here. So we need to Medical develop, tourism. Yes, we need also to have investment yes. in Malawi. Because if the health sector can invest in Malawi, they will make more money. You know, we belong to uh, what we call Southern Africa Development yes. Community yes. and the Comesa region, the SADC uh, Development uh, Community. Uh, you know, is the hub for Southern Africa. South Africa is there. So you can have more of patients and uh, the market there, apart from the Africa free continental trade area that we have within EU, that any investor coming to Malawi in any area would benefit uh, over to over 90 countries that uh, trade uh, within Africa. And India has always been a partner in all spheres and would want even to ask request more grants because we have borrowed and now we are reaching over capacity of borrowing yeah uh, so sometimes we in order for us to come up we need to get some grants in order to develop certain areas tourism is another area yeah. that uh, we need investment in, in uh, hotels uh, holiday resorts uh, those boats on the lake, you know, that lake is lagging, those, those, those things. Even infrastructure development, roads, railroad lines, uh, that your, your companies here in general can, 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 can bring all sorts of expertise in order to develop our country. Uh, His Excellency, you have mentioned a very important point actually for the definitely the India-Malawi relationship needs to go uh, in a new heights. And as you mentioned, there are huge opportunities, specifically if, uh, what I understood from your, uh, your, what you mentioned. The healthcare segment is very, very important segment. As a lot of people from Malawi for their medical treatment, for the operations, those who are coming to India. Uh, instead of that, if maybe the hospitality, uh, uh, hospitals needs to be settled there uh, from Indian side. Apart from that, the hospitality sector where the lot of hotels and the as, you, as there are such a fresh lakes are there. So these are the very the tourism spots can be built in that particular area uh, where resorts can be built and uh, then it is very easy for the people from the worldwide, not just from India to come in Malawi and enjoy the nature of Malawi uh, as the Malawi people are very friendly people. So I think the hospitality segment is a very huge potential. Yeah. And uh, agro, uh, there's agro and agro potential actually. So about uh, specifically, I want to ask about the agricultural related thing. A lot of uh, our Indian businessmen friends who are very keen that a uh, lot of uh, automobile, uh, automotive uh, related machineries and a uh, lot of things can be produced here regularly. So in that uh, area uh, for the agriculture, what do you think the uh, options or what do you think the opportunity for Indian businessmen to export uh, this machinery to Malawi? Now basically there is an opportunity that the government has created. It's the creation of what we are calling mega farms. Mega farms. Uh, so basically we are 
allowing even investors to come and be given that, that type of land so that they, when they bring machinery, there's a free incentive, uh, no taxes, no duty, and they should be allowed to manage and run that farm and be able to export. Mm -hmm. So we we'll have uh, a foreign exchange in return. Yeah. They will also be able to employ a lot of people. Okay. And you we'll also be able to have what I've called uh, the necessary food security. The excess will be packaged according to uh, external markets in Europe, in, 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 in the U.S., because um, if, 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 if an investor is able to invest in Malawi, you have market access to those countries, yes. um, U.K., Australia, as, as opposed. And then you have a huge population here because you are buying our raw materials, yeah. but you are, they are being made, uh, changed here. So we want that done in our country so that we... We, 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 we gain a little bit more than the way we are doing it now. So the mega farms are full of industrialized, mechanized type of farming. Attached to them, there should be factories. Okay. For example, we also export mangoes. Mm -hmm. They come raw here. There is no change. Of course, uh, through the Indian government, we, the Indian government helped us to have a sugar factory. Yeah. That must be revamped further because sugar has got uh, more opportunities all over the world. Yes. We only have one who is a monopoly, seconded by this uh, uh, Salima Sugar, which was supported by Exim Bank uh, through, a, uh, through that loan that in the India government uh, gave to us and uh, the shares are owned by Malawi government and India side. But we need to pull it up so that uh, it can even much, much more make more huge profits. And then we get something out of it. The Indian part also gets something out of it. Yeah. So the production of agriculture is subsistence farming in Malawi per se. We cannot develop mm -hmm. using that type of system. Uh, that's why there's uh, designated areas where these mega farms and uh, attached to it is the irrigation side. That lake, we are not irrigating. We rely on rain-fed agriculture, which is not um, uh, sustainable. So apart from the uh, equipment that is required for farming, there should be need a lot of uh, uh, mechanization in irrigation so that uh, we have those systems created yeah. for us as the way you do it here. We also have a nice rice. Yes. Uh, Malawi rice is uh, good, very good, but we are not producing much, which we can also be able to, uh, to, 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 to export here. Even uh, production of wheat, I know that you are the largest. Uh, Green production. We, yeah, yeah, but uh, you are too many as well. Yeah. A huge population. We, are, we can also be able to uh, produce those ones. Um, the other sector that requires much more development is the manufacturing of chemical fertilizers. Yeah. You know, with the conflict of Ukraine and Russia, where we used to get a chemical fertilizer, because of that war, we have been destabilized. The cost is just too much. True. So if we have a plant to manufacture fertilizer for our people, then the agricultural sector is going to be revamped and the prices will be cheaper. And then you'll be also be exporting neighboring Mozambique, Zambia, you know, South Africa, who are doing very well in farming. Yeah, so the markets are quite there. Yeah. And um, we are not very, we are land linked, yes, but it's only the closest is 500 kilometers to Mozambique and port. Yeah. And then 1,000 kilometers to Daslam port in Tanzania. So if you compare with the way your country is, we are accessible. Yeah. Yes. Actually, uh, even though the Malawi is a landlocked country, uh, but it doesn't matter because His Excellency has rightly suggested because the nearest port is just 500 kilometers and the distance is not much. So when Indian businessmen would like to think about to uh, establish 
any manufacturing plant so the market potential is huge so they should not just think about malawi but they should think about the the bigger market like tanzania is there apart from that mozambique is there and many african even till south africa they can think about the exports of goods and uh, there is a huge potential in malawi what his excellency is suggesting even in mining because mining is the area actually uh, there are a lot of things to explore yet yes. yeah and uh, if the port is just 500 km distance then there should not be any problem for the mining industry they should come there and do the lot of excavation and uh, lot of things can be possible in terms of volume so which are the things actually malawi government and which product specifically for the mining uh, you want indian businessman to come there and establish their big machinery uh, to do the excavation um i think uh, we have large deposits of coal cool. you know coal is available in malawi and as i've already uh, alluded to earlier there is gold uh, available in malawi this there are no mines for this people are just doing it by oh. hands oh. for a, a specific like gold so if gold can be exploited it means the uh, there is a lot that can be taken out of the ground yes. and we have um, uh, recently discovered a lot of layer earths rare earths that um, can be uh, mined that's for uh, manufacturing uh, television uh, screens and other electronics uh, things like rope tile rope tile has been um, like, uh, found Uh, not far from the capital in long 50 kilometers outside the city and there was an Australian company we said this huge deposits and these are uh, it's a rare thing that is required i think in manufacturing of electronics and and, and the like um we have bauxite bauxite yes uh, uh, and i've also been told that we do have diamonds people though don't explain yeah, fully we, we we have to ex- uh, explore that one okay great. and many hidden things because in malawi i shouldn't say that we have done all that mining enough True. because uh, malawi was considered as we don't have these things but recently we see a lot of uh, investors who are interested in these things so because these things require huge investment yeah. it's not easy for us to do it we require foreign direct investment and agreed terms are always amicable yeah. and um, beneficial for both sides because i've already alluded to i've already told you that malawi has got a liberal economy stable political environment peaceful english speaking workforce labor force and uh, quite a good place to invest in if it's a place that hasn't been discovered yeah. then it's that country in the middle uh, of these big bigger countries that people have already gone to but us we are open to, uh, to foreign uh, direct investment yeah. and we have achieved good bilateral relations for many years and for your information we have um, a bigger community from india here those who went there during the east africa building railway lines they many went years back. many years back in the 18th i think 18th or 19th almost 100 100 plus years yes back. they are the ones that have been doing trading and they are the ones that own factories and maybe some hotels mm-hmm. railway state and they are doing well yes. uh, they most of them i talk to i say i'm an ambassador in india they have never been <laughs> to this place india they don't know but they do speak hindi yeah. and uh, most of them are from gujarati so you four fathers have went yeah Mumbai. they went there and uh, they, they are the ones who are doing very well so uh, i think uh, that's a testimony uh, that uh, uh, malawi is a good place and we stay with them they are called malawians uh, we don't call them any other name and uh, it's a place to be for investment for trade 
and whatever you want to venture in, especially on the tourism side, I would assure you even the mining, uh, there are great opportunities. And these things can be given to you well detailed on paper than in, in an interview like this one. Yeah. Yeah. So we we'll have um, during the trade conclave uh, next week, the Minister of Energy is coming. The business people can come in to speak to the, him. The Minister of uh, Trade is coming with the lead of the delegation. They will give you with the experts, they will give you all the details. The Minister of Mining is also coming. Okay. They will give you all the details of what Malawi uh, has planned to do uh, five years, 10 years, 30 years. 2063 is the vision. Exclusive creation of a wealthy, exclusive wealth and nation which is self-reliant. That's what we envision us to be. Uh, so there are short-term uh, uh, projects, uh, long-term projects, development of hydro power. We have a number of sites that can be developed. We have 24-7 sunlight. Yeah. So a yes. lot of we have also biomass. Water, uh, water light is not uh, Yeah, biomass technology that we can also use for energy production. There are sites, and these are the things that we need to embrace and develop for us to reap the benefits. We also be would want to be like India. We are we are small in size, but uh, we feel like our our smallness shouldn't be a hindrance. We can develop and become a fully middle-income country so that our people should get out of uh, poverty. And we are just a small population of 22 million people. So we are not a difficult place uh, that requires so many other hidden things. No, no war, peace, natural and all the resources are there. We are there to develop fully. Sure. Great. So we are discussing for last uh, few minutes. There are huge opportunities uh, for the mining industry, uh, IT industry, agriculture industry, travel and tourism, hospitality, and many areas where actually the Indian businessmen can start exploring uh, their business with Malawi. And uh, as the port is also not the issue because most of the our Indian businessmen think about it is a landlocked country, then how we will do the business. Mm -hmm. But as you rightly suggested, the 500 kilometer port distance is definitely not much for such kind of businesses. So for the same growth, actually Global India Business Forum has started thinking that uh, we will think about that India Malawi business and cultural council is the uh, most important thing needs to be done so that the specific agenda can be explored how we can continuously help the Malawi businesses uh, the delegation needs to be planned the delegation which is coming here how can we support them so in that case sir your thought process on this particular council is very very important and the second question is about the cultural aspect because the culture and business always go hand in hand so India and Malawi uh, culture uh, will be helpful together to grow the bilateral relationship also. So your uh, thought process on that? Um, the Minister of Tourism, it is called Minister of Tourism and Culture. So in that ministry, there are linkages towards the cultural aspect of Malawi because we are different uh, uh, tribes and uh, we have got uh, the way of living and, and this can be uh, showcased. Uh, we, ha we have um, uh, the Chewa heritage of, from the tribal called the Chewas that speak most of the mother tongue that Mibo people are aware. We have the, 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 the Lomwe, we have the Yao, we have the Tumbuka, we have the Ngonis. So all these groups can be showcased right. and um, uh, sold uh, to the Indian community for us to understand more. As India-Africa is almost similar, sir, the thought process, we love to dance, 
you know, we love to express ourselves and african music and indian music always go hand in hand so we always uh, love to see the dance of africa and the different uh, states different countries there are different styles and in that case the occasions also there are many occasions where actually uh, african our brothers and sisters has prefer to dance and express themselves so we just want to know about this uh, dance and cultural part of specifically about malawi and uh, different groups of malawi and uh, how they express themselves at the time of different occasions um basically because of modernity um the government created um, a department that features cultural issues and where um, uh, dance and folklore are also showcased um i'll talk about what we call the cultural troupe yes which can also be able to come to india and the, in during various conferences they do showcase the different types of uh, dances and songs from different tribes that exist in Malawi yes. so, so in the village setting there are weddings there are events that people laugh yeah so each 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 ceremony has got uh, those dances that are uh, done by women men sometimes together yeah so those those dances are quite good sometimes they are done during night with moon or oh. fire you know uh, those things are there the most popular one we call it gule wankuru it's um showcased like some kind of secret society spirits mm -hmm. and uh, it has been adapted to during both funeral and uh, sometimes we have elected a chief they want to show that uh, this one has to be respected so they come into different scenarios their soul has to be respected yeah so there are all sorts of dances and uh, i feel like that's where we can connect more if you come to malawi visit us these ones can be showcased at different uh, ceremonies and occasions during different meetings yeah so we can actually do that cultural exchange i have been to many events here more or less the same that you do here and these other ones are typical um, done in the villages and people are happy people cook people eat together and enjoy life yeah yeah so that's what i can say uh, about uh, these cultural exchanges and they are not much different yes yeah you see the costumes uh, the the dressing the beating of the drums yeah. yeah in fact i'll buy some of these drums here so that i can give them to the people they are nice <laughs> drums here yeah. so friends yes definitely um, the dance and music which is a very integral part of our life and uh indian friends and the african friends and always try that the more and more such kind of cultural exchange program needs to happen in terms of uh, uh the different tribal groups can come here uh, present themselves and your role is very important sir and definitely uh, in time to come in the different uh, indian cities such programs can be arranged uh, in fact even the global india business forum sir uh, Uh, soon is trying for a big uh, uh, india africa uh, business and cultural exchange um, programs so definitely we'll try that uh, such kind of uh, dances should be presented in that particular program so apart from that there is a very one important question nowadays that uh, many african leaders are uh, now talks about the more and more attachment towards the eastern side countries like specifically china india indonesia and uh, this is the scenario actually happening for last few years now uh, this is a good sign that uh, africa is not just connected with the western world but the eastern world also where the uh, 
more and more attachment is possible in terms of business in terms of culture and uh, definitely uh, the thought process also so in that case your view on that uh, what you think uh, that in future how come specifically in the malawi uh, businesses needs to be connected more with east side not just india but the other eastern uh, countries also um well the the the, the aspect of malawi uh, going towards other countries is has been there and it has been a well thought process um you realize that uh, we have been in relations with india for a long time we have been in relations with japan for a long time uh, and um we were in a relationship with taiwan yeah but uh, do after around 2010 we opted to go to mainland china yeah. and um uh, a lot of things have changed the business climate uh because the chinese government has done a lot in in in, in Malawi a lot of business people from China a lot of Malawians go to get uh, equipment trade issues with China mainland China and um, it's a uh, totally changed everything in fact even our parliament we call it the new parliament building yeah. was donated and built by the Chinese uh, government uh, since uh, I think around uh, 2008 yeah so the shift is there but we also need to balance up and uh, we are balancing up we take it that we are brothers and sisters whom we can understand each other culturally business wise and uh, the other aspect is that you sell or we trade among ourselves with equipment that is reliable uh, that is valuable what we require more now is for you to invest more uh, the east should invest more in 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 in, in africa and malawi in general because uh, we can't continue on that path on that trajectory uh, that um, it it shouldn't be a one way process so uh, for us we have been coming to the east and you also should be going to the african south africa. africa to be specific yeah but these relations have been there uh, for some time and uh, we know uh, that this is the, the way forward and that's why we are always interacting and talking and uh, trading and investing Uh, yeah but we know that you need to invest more yeah, okay. uh, in, in Africa so that uh, we there are so many opportunities than any other continent uh, good environment good natural resources that you can even be able to get your countries even become more viable and even richer than they are now right yes yeah. So my uh, last uh, point to discuss about uh, in the last eight nine years, our Prime Minister uh, Sri Narendra Modi is, and our Foreign Minister Mr. Jay Shankar is doing a lot of efforts that India is growing very fast now, and India is becoming a global leader. Uh, definitely for uh, all of us, uh, the Africa is definitely a priority. african uh, lot of countries actually now indian government is also helping a lot in the covid time also uh, so what do you think sir uh, as a last comment about the efforts taken by the our uh, foreign ministers and our prime minister mr narendra modi to develop the great relationship between india and africa and the definitely your point is been well noted that the lot of investment is definitely needs to be uh, required in future so your comment on these efforts from india to strengthen this relationship with lot of lot of african countries um i think the relationship uh, now is much more stable and much more uh very focused towards economic development because so that's what uh, africa needs and um the assistance even in times of need like uh, the way it happened in my country 
India came a long way because we faced Cyclone Freddy, mm -hmm. which is um, destroyed most of the southern part of, of, of Malawi. And a lot of people died. But the Indian government has donated a lot of uh, things that um, I can't even mention here, inclusive medical okay. uh, assistance, medicines, uh, tents, food. You know, a country, a friendly country does come in in times of need. Okay. When there's a disaster like that one and you don't have friends, uh, it's when you are seen. But India came a long way. We are only requiring much more because we we require roads, uh, bridges, uh, road park, so that the transportation system, you know, for every valuable items should be possible. The railway lines, we need to bring them back, and even that's another area that we need to venture even more. Okay. Um, uh, 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 we can be able to put up that type of infrastructure, improve the roads, the way I see how the Indian roads look, the highways. Mm -hmm. We need to develop like that. But India has been a strong partner yeah. uh, in all aspects. As we are saying that we rely on India for all critical ailments of our people. They come here, they are treated here operated on with a cancer, the liver transplants, bone marrow transplants, all sorts of things. So the pharmaceutical industry, good equipment from this medical side, and um, even the areas of defense, we do get uh, those type of assistance and equipment from here. So the relations, uh, how India has been doing so well, is quite um, good for us and uh, it is to me one of the most uh, precious things that are happening uh, on earth here because the the conditions that you give us these loans this aid are not punitive mm. and that's what we see humanity we see kind heart in the people and um, the government here has been very supportive in anything that um, I've requested them to do because for them to come in I had to request for assistance and it didn't take them long okay. and um, that's what we have benefited more and more and uh, my government and my president Dr. Lazarus Shakwera are really very grateful uh, to India and its people. Uh, thank you very much for everything that you are con doing for us and continue doing it. Yes. Thank you, His Excellency. It's a very nice discussion. And definitely we are taking this relationship much ahead. And a lot of things have yet to happen in bilateral relationship. And your suggestions and your expectations from India. I think a lot of uh, Indian businessmen, those who are watching this interview, they will be keen to invest in various areas, as you suggested, in hospitals, medical equipments, hospitality industry, mining, IT, agriculture related equipments, uh, tourism related things. And definitely your expectation from our government for the more aid and more help. And I think definitely the respective authorities will definitely take the concurrence of this situation. And this relationship will definitely go ahead, not just business, but the cultural aspect also. Thank you so much sir, for your time and we will be very happy that in future we will be continuously interacting with you. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure uh, to have this interview with you. And I expect more and more opportunities in these areas of discussion. Investment is a key for development and economic growth. So my country will only develop if it has got uh, good friends who are keen to invest in a country. Come to the warm heart of Africa. Come to Malawi and you experience the warmness and friendliness of the people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.